Everything I receive and own is our profession. And this is where I own my income, I own my bills and everything. I'm Chris Isaac, Senior Fisheries Officer in the Fisheries Division, uh, Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry Fisheries, Rural Transformation, Industry and Labour, uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, traditionally, uh, in St. Vincent and Grenadines, our fishing industry is what you would call artisanal and small scale. Within the industry, we can say we have roughly about 850 registered fishing vessels, small scale fishing vessels. Our fishers would go to sea in the morning and return in the evenings um, or early afternoon. I had to wake up sometime at least one o'clock off my bed to go fish and to go at least 40 to 50 miles from St. Vincent to catch one pound of fish. Well, I've been in the fishing industry for the last um, 25 years. I'm in this business here for seven years now. 37 years and they're wrong in the market. I get involved from any fishing industry, from my parents, where my grandfather was a fisherman. My whole entire family was fishing, that's all we know. Fishing in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is mainly among the, the, the poorer people, the less educated people. Everything I receive and own is our profession. Um, I reel my family, I, I developed myself as a profession. I didn't have the opportunity to reach as where I wanted to reach in, in, in terms of education. As the fisheries sector grows, uh, it's important that uh, both management and the persons involved in the sector keeps up with this growth. We work closely with the fishers and were able to bridge the gap between the government and the fisher folk. We had several discussions, several consultations, several meetings were held to find out the needs of the fishers. The issue of climate change, I don't know if is that vast effect on catching us. Because when you look at the dolphin season, previous years we all know we have lots of dolphins. Today, we don't have any dolphins. In the sailing boat time, where they used to use smaller engines, they used to go at least five miles just from in Kingston. They used to just go around about around King and Point, that's just five miles, and they used to come back with a lot of fish. The most common in here is some rabbit, tuna, and balahu and gya. If it wasn't for the fad, maybe we wouldn't have fishes in the market. A fish aggregate device that is placed and certain. Um, fishing area where you know there's a, a feeding ground with fish. Um, these fads have enabled us um, in the Caribbean and specifically in St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, to build artificial grounds so to speak. So we are able to place devices in the, in the ocean and these allow our fishers to go to a specific location uh, where fish aggregate. Sometimes the tide sink it down, so when we go out, we, we, we may not see it. But with GPS, we know directly where to go. Our fishers are now able to target certain sites, use less gas, and basically are able to go here and know for sure that they would be able to uh, catch fish. Roughly about um, 900, 900 plus thousand pounds of fish. Is being landed at this facility every every year. Through our extension program on extension drive, in collaboration with our public education unit, we go to the fishing communities and um, we have consultation with our fishers, not only on issues that are affecting them in, from a livelihood perspective, but also on issues as it relates to preserving the biodiversity and the resources, the, the, the species that are being caught in terms of fishing in a sustainable way. During those consultations and meetings, the fishers outlined some of the areas that they had great needs for. For example, the establishment or the construction of several fishery centres throughout St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Apart from the new Kingston fish market, we have landing sites and facilities in Calico, Oria, Bekwe, Union Island and Kanawan. At these fishery centres, they made requests for accommodation for their boats, for their gears, 
for the provision of fuel and storage of uh, fish and fish products. Another uh, use of innovation um, very recently has been through the use of drone technology. So you're able to use drones, uh, map along the beach, and use this technology to have an idea of the amount of sargassum that is coming across on our shores. When it comes to the conservation of biodiversity, we look at uh, our fisheries regulations. There's the closed seasons that can be implemented or restrictions on gay or harmful practices. We have within our leg legislation, um, we prohibit the harvesting of parrot fish. Everybody abides by, the, by this legislation. Also, we have um, turtle, the harvesting of turtle. So far, that has, that has declined also. The, the authorities, which is the government, is still looking to see how they could change the mindset of the fishers and, and involve now in a fleet expansion program. We need to move away from the small scale fishing and move up the ladder. So, because if, as the water gets warmer, we have to go deeper. Within recent times, a number of females are getting involved as uh, fish processors. And um, we have seen recently that some of the applications for our fleet expansion program, we have a number of females. And so we are looking for a balance. It's an encouraging sight because a person sees the fishing industry as more predominantly male focus. One of the, the things that we are trying to, to do at, at the fisheries in terms of um, preserving the biodiversity within the fisheries sector is the use of the biodegradable materials within the fish pots. Through the Biospace project we are looking at even more innovation. Um, one of the initiatives that we will be looking at is at the pot fishery. Now, uh, with climate change coming along and with extreme weather events, a number of these fish pots will normally go missing during the fish pot season. We'll be looking at having a biodegradable hatch that can be placed on these pots. So in the instance that these pots are lost, then over time these biodegradable hatches can uh, break down and whatever species are in there can come out. So we're also going to be looking at enhancing the way that we both collect and process data. Um, under this project we'll be looking at building the capacity of the fisheries division and a couple more for management agencies in using GIS. Even though the uh, marine resource can be regenerated um, we want to make sure that it's sustainably used so that the benefits are there not only for this generation but also for future generations to come. I think the fishing industry play a real, real vital role to the GDP of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. For the time I did, I have no regret. You know me? Because I have five kids with my wife, second, all of them secondary educated, one, u, one a university grad, so you, 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 I have no regret being in the, the industry. I love what I do.